Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I am a professor of philosophy at NYU Program of Liberal Studies and I am an author. And I am extremely excited and honored to be here with you to reflect about the art of being posthuman, which is my latest book. In this video, which is uh, the conclusion of a mini series where we are addressing all the aspects of the book, The Art of Being Posthuman, which has uh, just been released by Polity Press uh, a couple of months ago, 2024, and which has been defined as a self-help guide to navigate our brave new world. In this uh, book presentation and book review, we have delved into all the meditations. There are eight of them. The book, in fact, is conceived as a labyrinth, and you can feel free to move in any way you want, not only through the chapters, which are defined as meditations, but also through the meditation itself. In fact, each meditation is divided through tags, and each tag is actually independent, and you can read each tag on its own. In this uh, video, we are addressing the conclusions of the book. They come with some interesting, enlightening, inspiring insights. These are the eight meditations that we have already addressed in our previous videos. Although the book is not linear, so you may watch this one as your first video, which is absolutely fine. If you are interested to delve into the other chapters slash meditations, you can go into posthuman self-inquiry number one, human decluttering. We talk about prehistory and incredible meditation there in number two. In number three, we talk about biology, genetic engineering, and DNA, biotic coemergencies. In meditation number four, we go into rights of nature, into the Anthropocene, into ecological presence. Meditation number five, we delve into the cosmos, our cosmic presence into cosmic constellations. In number six, we go into technological enhancement, the high-tech prophecy, big data, and enlightened robots. In number six, we go into socio-cultural agency, education, to school or to unschool. Meditation number eight is ontological presence, to be or not to be, being and not being, existence. What is existence? And from here, as being the last meditation, we go into our conclusions that come in the book with some interesting insights that truly came when I was writing the conclusion. I was writing the conclusions, and all of a sudden, I had this thought. Why are some people awake and others are not? Without judgment, I want to make clear that uh, everyone can choose the way they want to live their lives. And some people may really be interested in trying to understand who they are, and some others are not, and it is their choice. And I'm not judging them. But mine is an existential question. If we are a species, so we share more than 99% of our DNA together, actually 99.9% .9 of our DNA is shared at the species level, so why is that that some people are awake and some people are not? or if you want, as Buddha would say, are, are sleeping, are dormant. And so I had this thought while I was writing the conclusions of this book. In embodied terms, ignorance, and I want to clarify that I'm not judging ignorance, I take it as an option, as a possibility, as a choice. I want to be very clear about this. I'm an Ichian scholar, beyond good and evil, I'm not judging. But it is an option, it is a choice of many people, and maybe it's, a, it's an option of our own options sometimes. Maybe sometimes we want to be ignorant. Maybe sometimes we don't want to really know what's going on. Hmm? So it might tell what is ignorance. Ignorance is a possible survival mechanism in and of our plane of existence, an acquired evolutionary trait specific to this dimension. 
a secret algorithm in the coding of the cosmic play of Lila. Code. If everyone self-realizes that this is a game, game is over. I want to take a minute to explain this really interesting insight that I had while I was writing this book. This whole journey of reflection about uh, why some people would, uh, let's say, get enlightened and some others do not, started uh, actually here at NYU in 2014. It was my first year teaching, and I was kindly offered to teach ancient philosophy. So I've been here uh, teaching for uh, 10 years, and I teach either ancient, I, can also, I also teach contemporary philosophy, but that semester I was invited and I taught ancient philosophy. And so I was teaching Buddhism. And this student raised their hand and they asked me this question. They asked me, Professor, what would happen if everyone got enlightened at the same time? And I did not know how to answer. So I said, uh, dear student, I'm going to look into that, and I'm going to come with some answers. I usually don't do that, but I really had no answers. And so I looked into the history of Buddhism, and I was not fully happy with the answers. Most of the answers were like, it's never going to happen, so don't even think about that. It is an intellectual game what you're trying to do. Forget about it. That's, for instance, what Zen would say. Don't get lost in the mind. Be here right now. But I was not fully satisfied with this answer. Until, this was in 2022, when I was finalizing this book, and I was writing the conclusions, and it hit me. It hit me. It was like, if everyone get enlightened at the same time, if everyone realized that who we are, the game is over. And of course, I'm drawing upon a Hindu tradition, which is the tradition of Lila, which I'm going to go back a second if you're not familiar. I don't want to confuse anyone. But Lila is a notion that comes from the Hindu tradition. And it is about uh, what if, sorry, I'm, I'm getting, the computer is taking some poiesis and freedom, <laughs> which is always good, but I wanted to focus on Lila. So Lila, is uh, this uh, notion in Hindu cosmologies, according to which this is uh, the cosmic game that we are living, but is not created by anyone by us. No one but us. It's not a god creating this game for us. There is no creator creating this game for us. In this notion, which is specific to the Hindu cosmologies, we, as a plural entity, of course, in, this in tradition one is not separated from many, we would be the creators and the audience and the playwriters and the screen and the stage and the prompts, I'm going to talk about some roses soon, we would be all of that. And the only reason why we would be existing right now is defined in uh, uh, ontological, philosophical terms as Sat Chit Ananda. And I'm going to uh, focus on the last part of this because the other parts are kind of awareness and consciousness. Ananda, bliss, to enjoy. To enjoy. Because children, why do children love to play? Because they love to enjoy the game. Doesn't have to be a funny game. They, for instance, love to be sometimes be scared and, 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 and hide and be found and, and run and scream. You don't have to enjoy, uh, you don't have to, to have a fun game, but you're going to enjoy your game. Why do some people watch horror movies instead of uh, comedies? Because it gives you adrenaline, because it's a strong emotion. So according to this tradition, the real only reason of existing is the creative unfolding power of, of existing, is the bliss, is the fun. And when I say fun, again, don't think of necessarily a happy ending. A lot of people watch movies that have tragic ending, but they enjoy that. Eh? So think of art beyond, again, these short categories of what is good and what is not. Now, if we think of ourselves as being the creators 
of our own game of existence. This is why the book in the blurb we says that our lives are our ultimate works of art. And we talked about this in the introduction of this miniseries. So in this uh, approach, if everyone self-realizes that this is a game, so they say that you are playing hide and seek as a child, and everyone say, ah, this is just a game. I don't want to play hide and seek because it's just a game. Game is over. Then you have to do something else. And the same go with existence. So almost the secret algorithm of existence is coding, coding, if everyone self realizes that this is a game, game is over. And it would be the answer to my student 10 years ago, what would happen if everyone got enlightened, where enlightening means simply know who you are, simply know the game of existence, simply know the reason why we are here right now. And so the book ends with a posthuman mantra, and mantras in uh, um, Eastern traditions have uh, the power of the sound. It's not just the meaning, it's, it's something that can be repeated and can bring power uh, of uh, understanding, of uh, um, awareness. And I would like to end with uh, this posthuman mantra. We are part and art beyond the human. We are. When we think of part, I like to place the P in parentheses and think of uh, by being part of something, we are an art of something. By being part of the human species, we are, are unfolding the art of being human or the art of being post-human. And so I would like to end this uh, mini-series on the art of being post-human with these beautiful roses that I have uh, introduced you, if you have watched some of these videos, in the first uh, welcoming of the mini-series on the art of being post-human. I was walking today to come to uh, record this video and to actually teach uh, a post-human course after this. And I am uh, in Midtown in New York City, where I am currently teaching. And I see these roses in a shop and I stop and I smell them and I keep smelling them and I keep smelling them. And eventually I decided that I couldn't <laughs> go on smelling them because I had to come here <laughs> and so I bought them. And I, I read the little note that they come with, uh, with the price and they tell you where they come from. And they actually come originally from Colombia. So these are uh, roses that were grown and nourished in Colombia, in, uh, in uh, Latin America. And then they were probably sent by plane, I would assume, to New York City. And I bought them today and I bring them here. And uh, their physical existence is probably going to dry out in a couple of days. Um, but their digital existence is going to be uh, with, uh, with us for a very long time, and they are part of my hands right now in the digital realm. There is no separation between my hands and the image, the pixel that are representing these roses. So I want to dedicate the book and this mini series to these roses, because these roses represent the Anthropocene, represent the, the subtle smell of a rose in a big city like New York in the 21st century. And I would like to end with a quote that is not in the book, but is in my heart. Gertrude Stein. A rose is a rose, is a rose, is a rose, is a rose. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for being a rose of existence. Enjoy your life because your life is your ultimate work of art. And if you would like to stay connected, you can uh, 
visit my website www.thepostuman.org. Thank you so much for existence, for existing together. We are in this together and we are all unique as art is. Thank you so much.